Hi guys, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Woman podcast. I'm here with my friend and prayer partner and podcast co-host Jamie, and we're really glad you joined us today. We're going to be talking about motivational tendencies and how your specific tendency can um, either help or hinder some of the prayer habits that you're trying to make. So I'm pretty excited about this episode, and let's open with a word of prayer. God, thank you for bringing us here today and just giving us this opportunity to talk about how something that's secular and non-spiritual can really affect our our spiritual lives and our prayer lives. God, we just pray you'd open our hearts and our ears to hear what you have to say to us today and just bless this time and be glorified. Amen. Well, our, let's see, verse of the day, hang on. I need to get back into this. This is our, some of you know that we record in batches. So this is our first recording in this batch. And so I'm kind of getting back into ready, it. Ready to all go. Do you have it there? Otherwise I, I can read it. Okay, I've cool. I've got it. So verse of the ver- day. Verse of the day. So our verse of the day is from 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 20. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. And I know that was long, but I just feel like this overall kind of shows diversity in God's creation and his people and how we're all so different. And we have all of these different gifts. We have all of these different personalities. And like we're going to talk about today, we have lots of different motivational tendencies. And so rather than stuffing prayer in a box and making you feel bad because you don't look like someone else's prayer life, we just wanted to talk about these motivational tendencies to help us to understand ourselves better and kind of like when we talked before about the different learning styles, um, just open ourselves up to, to being able to incorporate different aspects of prayer into who God made us. Awesome. Yeah, that was a perfect segue into our discussion. And before we dive into the motivational tendencies, and we're going to be talking about what the tendencies are and how to know what type you are and how that impacts your prayer life. But our just for fun question is, what's the most creative way you've ever procrastinated? I feel like there should be another one, but this was, this was the one that came to mind when I thought of that question. Um, cleaning my, uh, cleaning our family lizard's cage. I, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> right. You must've been pretty desperate to procrastinate. <laughs> I don't know, but it was like, I, 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 yeah, I had so many other things to do. And I just remember this one particular time that, uh, I just, I, I got the trash bag out. I got the scooper and I'm like all ready to go. They got the gloves on and I, I don't know why. And I remember even afterwards thinking, why did I do that? I mean, was it, was that an (laughs) urgent thing of all the things that needed to be done? So that was my creative thing. I feel like I should be more creative, but how about you? (laughs) Well, you know, it's funny because in my mind, like I kind of resist the word procrastination because a lot of times like I buy into, I call it like productive procrastination where, you know, like if I've got writer's block, I don't wants to necessarily just plow through it. Now, sometimes I do, but sometimes I need a break. And so I actually like have a list of things that I can do that are not writing itself, but still kind of related. Um, The one, probably the one that would look the funniest to people is I rearrange all the house plants. Like I'll move things from one shelf to another. (laughs) But in my mind, like it's a totally deliberate, like it gets me moving around the house. It gets me going upstairs, downstairs. It's when I can check to make sure they're all watered. So like, there's a purpose to it, but yeah, I mean, really it is. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't like the word procrastination, but that's what it would look like to somebody. I like that. I think that's good. And, but it's also, you said that it's relaxing to you to do mm-hmm. that. Right. So it's right. also sort of a, like it's, you're engaged, but there's not, a purpose behind yeah. it for sure. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Um, one time my husband came home, I was supposed to be writing a first draft and he came home and the house was like abnormally clean. <laughs> and the first thing he said to me, he says, oh, so you still have writer's block? Because, <laughs> uh-huh. you know, like cleaning isn't my go-to, but sometimes it is what I'll turn to if I don't have, um, you know, like if just the words aren't coming or something like that. 
Yeah. So. Well, I kind of like the way that you don't like to use the word procrastination because that in itself is kind of, I, I think that sort of, uh, maybe as we're talking about motivational tendencies, I think that might speak to kind of some of your own mm-hmm. motivational style and tendencies. Yeah. yeah. That you don't even like to use that word. Yeah. Yeah. Because, for sure. Yeah. What you're doing is targeted, not passive or victim. Right. Yeah. Right. Because I think when you get into procrastination, I mean, like, and I'm, I'm not shy about saying, yeah, like on a weekend, I might spend three hours playing Tetris. You know what I mean? Like there's no purpose behind that outwardly, but I'm doing it on purpose. Do you know what I mean? I'm right. kind of like, this is what I'm going to do to You've relax. chosen to do it. Yeah. yeah I'm absolutely. choosing to do it. Whereas like if you buy into um, like the shame of procrastination, then it just mm-hmm. turns into this like spiral. Why can't I get things done? And, mm-hmm. and that is, is harder. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's dive into the tendency. So I forget, Jamie, how much you and I, I know we've talked a little bit about this, but I forget to what depth. Well, so I listened to the podcast episode that you uh-huh. recommended. So I know about my, you know, own your type motivational uh-huh. tendencies, but I don't know a ton about others. So okay. You're definitely okay. going to be in the in the saddle for this discussion. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I was totally geeking out about this subject for <laughs> weeks, as Jamie knows, and my husband knows, and <laughs> lots, lots. I've already done like two um, online trainings for authors about it. Like, lots of people know I'm geeking out about this. <laughs> so, the motivational tendencies. It's a framework developed by an author named Gretchen Rubin, and her book is just called The Four Tendencies, and basically. To give the quick overview, it's people are either motivated by external or internal expectations or a combination or lack of either. So basically, there are four major tendencies, and I want to go over each one and talk about how motivating yourself to pray is going to really vary based on what your tendency is. So sometimes, like if somebody's struggling in their prayer life, we give one size fits all tips. You know, it's okay, we'll pray with a timer or okay, just make it a goal to write in your prayer journal every day or make a list. Um, whereas like sometimes if if you're a different tendency than the kind of tendency that those kinds of things would work for, it could actually backfire. Um, so let me just give the really quick overview. Jimmy, feel free to jump in. So um, this is all based on Gretchen Rubin's framework. I just gave cute animal names to these because it helps me remember them easier. <laughs> so let's start with the puppy because that's what you were. And it was so funny because I was listening to one of um, Gretchen Rubin's podcasts. And that's the one that I sent to you, Jamie. Like, you have to listen to this. <laughs> well, it's funny because my personality animal in the marriage counseling thing that my husband and I did. Your golden we retriever or whatever it was. Yep. Retriever, so I'm yeah. just a dog. <laughs> you are a dog. <laughs> I'm a dog. I'm a good dog. You are. You're a good girl. <laughs> good dog. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Okay. So the puppies are the quintessential people pleasers. And so the, um, and I, I want to start by saying there's no wrong tendency. Like this is just how you are. It's not worth trying to change your tendency. You're feeling bad about your tendency. It's just once you recognize your tendency, you can just find things that work within your tendency. So the majority of people are puppies. They're the people pleasers who are motivated by external factors. They're going to meet external expectations. So if you're a puppy, you're really good about serving others. You're really good about, like, if you commit to volunteer in the nursery on the second Sunday, you're going to be there. But where you have a harder time is setting goals for yourself. So maybe saying things like, I want to have dinner ready every day by five o'clock. That's going to be really hard for you as a puppy because that's just an expectation that you're imposing on yourself. And you don't have opposable thumbs. So it really gets in the way of meal prep. (laughs) Sorry. It does. It does. All you can do is hold your dog dish in your mouth, like Snoopy, and be like, it's empty, guys. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help it. That was pretty funny. <laughs> I didn't know where you're going at first. I'm like, opposable thumbs. We're not talking about monkeys. I don't know why that's where my brain went. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Since, since you are kind of the quintessential puppy, do you want to add anything to kind of like, what, what about her description of your motivational type jumped out to you? Well, one of the things that really jumped out to me, I mean, I've always known I'm a people pleaser or I've, since, you know, maybe my early 20s, I've, I've figured mm-hmm. that out. But what I didn't realize was that my motivation, because I started to think, well, if I'm a people pleaser, why do, why is it so hard to please my family? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what she said was very telling. She said, 
sometimes your immediate family, you lump in with yourself. You see it as you. Yeah. So if something's, you know, like, let's just say, uh, I want to have dinner on the table at five o'clock every evening because my husband needs to eat early so that he can digest mm -hmm. well and go to bed early for work or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I want to do it for him. And so that should be a, a huge motivator. Yeah. That because he's my husband. Yeah. Unconsciously or subconsciously or whatever, he gets lumped into me. So yeah. I don't see that. And that <clears throat> is why, and I've always known that my family gets put under mm -hmm. acquaintances mm -hmm. put on the back burner that ask, or, yeah. yeah 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 and that's yeah, like why. if your neighbor was sick and she needed dinner every day at 4 30 because she was diabetic and you volunteered to do that i have no doubt like you'd be like yeah she needs her dinner right now i'd be there i'm gonna get this done yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so going into like your prayer life and things yeah. that will help you stay motivated in your prayer life if you're a puppy this is like it's harder to just set yourself a goal and stick with it that's just not how you work. So doing things like having some external accountability can help or even focusing on prayers for others. Like if you have this sense of, oh, well, Alana is counting on me to pray for her. You know, like I have no doubt if I was going through a major issue and said like, and you told me every day at 11 a.m., I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to pray for you. I have no doubt that you would follow through with that commitment. Whereas if you just told yourself, yeah, I want to pray every day, maybe 11 would be a good time to meet with God. That would be harder. Yeah. <laughs> and so thinking about like who's counting on you to pray can be a good one. Um, and then maybe just having some accountability, whether that's somebody maybe once a week, hey, are you, are you meeting your prayer goals or let's just meet together to pray. Like you're not going to let somebody else down. So like if you and I were going to meet at a coffee shop every Friday to pray, you would show up. You know, whereas if you just told yourself, I'm going to sit in my little cozy chair in my prayer corner every Friday, that's harder. Um, are there any other tips that you have for puppies about just kind of sticking to prayer goals and, and keeping them? Um, I think uh, one thing that has helped me just in many different areas of getting things done around the house has mm -hmm. been using a timer not to, uh, and, and with the idea that the timer would limit, would make me work faster for doing yeah. things like that. But mm -hmm. I could see um, a timer also holding you to your prayer time. And yeah, you're and accountable to you. that timer. <laughs> you're accountable to that timer. Yeah. You're accountable. And, and also, if you set a short timer, I, what I have had a lot of success with is short timer things like mm -hmm. one minute or two minutes where it also helps you focus. So I don't mm -hmm. know if the motivational tendency that I have is prone to not be able to focus, but I know that personally it's hard for me to, to stay targeted and focused and my mind wanders a lot. And so mm -hmm. having a short timer also yeah. kind of, I'm accountable to pray. You're for accountable. That yeah. Time. That's what it is. You're accountable to that external stimulus yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it, yeah. So that's been helpful. Another thing that I think could work well for puppies is since you are so good at showing up for other people, is that maybe you could tie that in. Like, I know you, for example, sometimes will drive a friend to medical appointments, you know, or maybe that time while you're there waiting is time where you just bring your Bible. You know what I mean? You're not going to let your friend down. <laughs> um, <Right. clears throat> this is going to sound really, really morbid to people who don't like the idea of needles, but I've thought about becoming a regular blood donor, not just because I'm like, oh, I want to do something good for my community, but I'm like, that actually sounds almost a little bit relaxing. <laughs> like, it is. Oh, I love it. Do you know it. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, so, oh, you've done it? I haven't done it since I had kids, but okay. before I had kids, I, I, whenever I was allowed to go, like I had uh -huh. my lunchtime appointment and like I would go to the blood bank and give blood. Oh, that's funny. Because I'm O positive. So I'm almost a You're universal. You're a universal. Donor. Yeah. And I don't mind needles and I have good veins. So I thought, well, why not? <laughs> That's hilarious. I think it's so funny that you're like a puppy people pleaser and a universal donor. That's so fitting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like if, if you're having a hard time, just knowing that a people in your community who need your blood are counting on you and b like, you've got a schedule at the blood bank right. and then you just show up. I mean, how long does it take? I'm thinking like 20, 30 minutes. Is that yeah, about right? Or? If there's, yeah. If you have an appointment and, and it's not busy, yeah. 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Is, and so like you bring your Bible with you and you spend that time praying, you know, like it's a standing a appointment idea. with God, but you've got that external motivation to make it happen. 
Yeah, that's a really, that's a very creative idea. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I told my, I started to tell my husband he, that he's got like, um, it's not quite a needle phobia, but he's got that vaso, uh, like he can't help it. Like he faints with needles. Oh. And so he's like, yeah, I don't even want to hear. Like, if you're going to do this, don't even let me know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go into some of the other types. So the second most common type is a salmon. And so this is the exact opposite. And this is, you don't care as much about what other people think of you, but if you set a goal for yourself, you're absolutely going to make it. That's why I called it a salmon. Cause like you're fine going against the flow if it's something that you believe in. And they don't, and they might not know what salmon do though. So salmon when they're spawning, cause we live in Alaska. So we know yeah. a mm-hmm. lot about salmon, but they swim upstream and maybe other fish do this too. I'm sure. I've just heard of salmon, but, but yeah, yeah, who knows? Salmon. Yeah, but they swim upstream and just yeah. like go through these crazy obstacles to get to their goal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and if somebody else, like a salmon doesn't need, I'm not talking about the animal anymore, I'm talking about the people who are salmon. like, they don't need someone on the sidelines being like, go get them, Jamie, you can do it. Because like a salmon's like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, salmon isn't my primary tendency, but it's kind of my secondary tendency. And so like one example of me as a salmon, I was part of this accountability group for writers. And every week, We posted what our daily goal was, and at the end of the day, every single day, we were supposed to say whether we made the goal or not. Now, in my mind, if I say I'm going to make the goal, I'm going to make the goal, and if I don't make the goal, I have a really good reason for not making the goal. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. You chose not to make the goal. Exactly. Like the procrastination thing, you know, like if I'm not doing what I thought I was going to be doing, I've got a reason for not doing that thing. Right. And so for me, like being part salmon, it's like that didn't help, whereas for somebody who's more of a people pleaser, a puppy that external motivation is really helpful. But if you're a salmon, you're going to rely on the internal motivation. So you're really good with things like um, setting a checklist, you know, making, um, maybe having like a daily planner where you can fill out a prayer journal every day or list what you've prayed about every day, or even like just put put a star on your calendar each time you, you know, had your quiet time or whatever it is. You're the kind of person, once you set a goal, you're going to do it. If you start a read through the Bible, you're going to read through the Bible. Like it's just, it's going to get done and you don't really need someone checking up on you. Like to you, that's going to feel like nagging. Whereas like if you're a puppy and you want to read through the Bible in a year, you're going to probably need someone like on a weekly basis. Hey, where are you at in your Bible reading? Whereas if you're a salmon, it's like, Hey, I said I was going to read this. That means I'm going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's going to feel like nagging. Um, it's really useful if you're married to kind of think about your spouse and is what you might think that you're giving them like help and encouragement. And they might think that you're being like the naggiest person in the world, you know? Right. That might actually, rather than helping them, that might almost make them want to not achieve that goal because you're pressuring them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm going to swim against the green. Just because. Exactly. (laughs) Yes. Well, that's a good tie in to the cat um, tendency. And so the cat doesn't rely on internal or external motivations. And so, um, very much like what we talked about when what you were just talking about, where like if you suggest something, that might sabotage the whole thing. (laughs) You know how, like, we all know people who, like, you can't ever suggest an idea. You have to make it so that, like, (laughs) they need to come up with the idea on their own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, This is very much a cat because they don't want to be told what to do. But if you're a cat, the other problem, though, is that even if you set a goal or a plan for yourself, it's really hard to stick with it. Because you want to always prove to yourself that you don't have to do things a conventional way. <laughs> and so you're, if you're a cat, your prayer life might not look as structured as some. And that's okay. Like if you're, as long as you're praying, it's fine. So you don't have to pray at the same time every day or have your prayers look the same every day. Um, you know, it's time to just kind of embrace your catness, which if you're this personality type, like you really just, when you get the whim, you want to do it and you want to do it now and you don't want to be held to a structure. So you might not ever read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation because to you, that's just too much structure. And so just to prove that you can do it, you might start in Ezekiel. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, um, and you might bounce around and, and that's okay. Um, in your prayer life specifically, it, it might be that you never really have a set quiet time, but as long as you're connecting with the Lord, it's totally fine. And especially if you're a cat, I, I really recommend that you just change things up. 
Um, so even if you do good, you know, writing in a prayer journal on a daily basis or something, don't just tell yourself that this is only for a short time and that can make it easier and then change it up and do something else. Um, otherwise your, your tendency is going to be to rebel against other people's expectations as well as your own expectations. So that's why like if you're a cat and you say, I'm never going to drink Coke again, like two days into that, you might, you know, drink a whole six pack just to prove to yourself that you're still in control, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, it seems like with a cat, you would need to be in tune with you know, with, with the other motivators, you could always be motivated by, you could kind of almost manipulate yourself into doing whatever. Mm -hmm. So setting a goal, okay, I'm going to pray at this time. Or, or if you're the puppy, you know, getting someone else to hold you accountable to a goal mm -hmm. with a cat, it seems like you almost need to be in tune with what brings you joy, what, exactly. what brings you. And I think of John Piper's book, the um, desiring God, where he talks about Christian mm -hmm. hedonism, mm -hmm. what did God place in you to draw you to himself like what right are the now, things yeah. do you love nature do you love hiking just right. commune with god while you're hiking or you know so i don't yeah. know it seems like that would be even more important for a cat to be in tune with themselves well and i think yeah and and also for a cat just having choice is really important because you don't want to feel trapped and so yeah. maybe just having like here are 10 things that i could do to worship god i could listen to this worship playlist I could read Psalms. I could walk through nature. I could, you know, who knows? You can be as creative and unconventional as you want because you're a cat. Like that's how you're made. And so having the choice of that, as opposed to saying, okay, each day I am going to read a chapter of Psalms and then I'm going to spend three minutes listing out at least 10 things I'm thankful for like that. For a cat, that just might never truly work all that well for you. Um, and so, yeah, n having, having choice, like I've got a couple different prayer guides that sometimes I'll just, Hey, which one do I want to go through today? Something like that could be really useful for a cat as opposed to like, I'm going to open this book on page one and pray through this book <laughs> or something like that. For sure. So what's your, what is your primary? <clears throat> So I'm an ant, and that's the fourth one that we'll talk okay, about. So and, I was thinking, so, you're not a cat. I don't no, 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 no. Okay, so um, real quick recap is puppies rely on external motivation. Salmon rely on internal motivation. Cats don't rely on external or internal. And then the ant relies on both internal and external motivation. And so that's me. Um, so basically, you take like the person who's just really good at meeting New Year's resolutions, writing things on this, like kind of like the salmon. Like if you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Um, but they also are cognizant of what other people want, need, and so on. Um, but each person is going to have like a secondary as well. And so like I'm, I'm an ant, but I lean more towards a salmon. So that's why that accountability group just never really worked for me <laughs> or something. But um, as an ant, you can for sure dive into your tendency to be disciplined, but I think your, um, your major pitfall can be like over disciplining it. Do you know what I mean? And just praying to check mm -hmm. it off your list or mm -hmm. just reading the Bible to, to say you've done it. Whereas, um, like those are good things to do, but you can almost make that your religion. Do you know what I mean? And not the actual purpose behind it, which is to connect with the Lord, to become more like God, things like that. Yeah. It's um, like that, the Mary and Martha for sure. of like yeah. you know, the regimented, like do, 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 or sit at mm -hmm. the feet of Jesus. It's like, you've got to yeah. go look beyond and maybe over your tendency time. might be to overstructure or right. be, be so rigid. Um, like the, the stereotype would be the mom who's kid just like cut off their finger. It's like, I can't help you now. I'm having my quiet time. <laughs> like, you know, that's, that's hyperbole. That's a joke, but like, that's kind of that mentality. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. um, if, if you had said, I'm going to pray every day from 10 to 10 30, and this is going to be my quiet time and your neighbor called and said, my kid's sick and we don't have a right to the hospital. You're not even going to think twice right? Mm -hmm. About, oh, well, obviously that's what I should do. And, <laughs> you right. know, whereas I might like it at an ant's worst, they, I mean, no, no, like, 
Christian aunt's probably going to be like, sorry, I can't do this. But at the worst, it'll be like feeling resentful or feeling almost superstitious, like God's not going to bless me because I didn't finish my quiet time right. or things like that. Um, so those are the four tendencies in a nutshell and kind of how your tendency can impact your prayer life. And I think the biggest takeaway is just to know your own tendency and to realize that what motivates some people isn't what's going to motivate you. And so when you're trying to motivate yourself to be more disciplined in your prayer life, to find things that work within your specific tendency. Well, and I think of someone, you know, like trying to put a cat into a, into a puppy Mm -hmm. situation or, or an ant situation Mm -hmm. that, that cat would feel so inadequate. And so I think we have to just really, um, and maybe that's my puppy coming out because maybe the cat just wouldn't care. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm like, wouldn't that cat just feel like a failure? No. <laughs> that it is that's less, funny. But, no. But, but the bottom line is don't beat yourself up because you don't look like what you think. Exactly. And don't even necessarily try, don't try to change your tendency. To look like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad you picked the verse of the day that you did. Like God made us different ways for different things. And I think that in the body of Christ, I think we do need to have this kind of variety. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So oh, that- absolutely. I mean, we need the goal setters and the goal meters. Mm-hmm. We need the free spirits. We need, we need all. Oh yeah. Different- and the people who are going to drop everything to help others. You really yeah. do need, yeah, we all do work together. So don't try to fight it against your tendency. Just figure out you know, the strengths of your tendency and work with those. So like for Jamie, for you, that's, you're never going to let somebody down. That's just not within your nature. And so (laughs) find ways to connect that, you know, so maybe you and a friend say, Hey, let's read through the Bible together. You know, like not every day we're going to read a chapter, you know, face to face, but you know what I mean? Like just to hold each other accountable or, you know, if you're the cat, maybe that just means that you give yourself a couple different choices as opposed to saying, you know, my quiet time is going to be this and it's going to look this way every day. Say, do I want to pray in the morning, in the evening or on my lunch break today? Do you know, like having those choices can work really well for you. So anyway, do you have anything else you want to add about that? Well, I just had a question. So for the ant, what would be yeah. something to help temper some of that rigidity? Do you think what would be good for me? What I do and Yeah, I can speak at least for my own experience. Sometimes I will, um, okay, so I have an example that I'll give. So I had this app, it was like a a habit tracker app. And so each time you met your goal, you would tell it that you met your goal, right? So for somebody who relies on external motivation, that could be really, really, really useful. For me, I was on day 29, And I knew that by day 30, I was going to get this like little sticker that would go by my profile picture. And I'm like, I don't want your stinking sticker. And so I like deliberately didn't do my goal that day (laughs) because I'm like, this is stupid. That's a dumb sticker. (laughs) Like, what am I going to do with this sticker? And so, but, but some of it was self-protection because I knew if I got that sticker, that that could kind of kick in toward my, um, like type A personality so that I almost feel trapped. So like yeah. I got the sticker once, I'm going to have to keep getting the sticker. So sometimes like going against the grain and saying, well, I'm actually not going to prayer journal today. Like <laughs> even as an aunt, like saying that makes me get all nervous. <laughs> but sometimes like actually deliberately stepping away and changing it up can be helpful because otherwise you can get so wound up in just the ritual and the routine that that's when you get like that kind of anxiety, like, no, I have to keep this up or I'm never gonna, you know, be good enough or something like that. Um, and then to just remembering the people aspect. So, you know, I, I think of Jesus healing on the Sabbath. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. for an aunt, that would not feel like the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so we have, we have Jesus's example of, yeah, people's needs, like for you, as a puppy, that that's never going to be a question. It's never going to be a question of, well, should I, I don't know, should I clean my house and exercise my body or should I help this family in crisis? <laughs> you're like, you're never going to have to ask that question. Whereas for somebody who's kind of tied more rigidly, they, someone like me as an aunt, you need to just remember, yeah, like people do like relationships are important. People are important. 
Um, and then just remembering the devotion side of it and mm-hmm. not just the discipline side is, I think, helpful too. Well, and maybe kind of like the cat tapping into what brings you joy in connecting mm-hmm. with God rather yeah. than the regimented exactly. aspect of it and, and mm-hmm. take a moment, whether it's just being in silence or yeah. taking a walk. And, yeah. You okay, know what I do me. is I, yeah, I actually, I do set prayer goals, which is a very ants thing to do, but I change them up like at least every quarter. So, and I think part of that is also a very ant thing to do. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. It's on my calendar time to change my prayer goal. (laughs) But I also know like if I kind of like with that app that was going to give me my dumb sticker, (laughs) do you know what I mean? Like if I go too far doing the exact same thing, then I will feel like, um, like I can't not do that. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it can become just mechanical. That's neat. Great. Well, we would love your comments. Let us know yeah. in the comment section what your tendency is if you recognized yourself here. Um, and again, if you want to dive deeper into this, the book that this is based on is The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Um, the, the book itself isn't about prayer and spirituality. It's just about like forming good habits, what motivates you, but super interesting if you like geeking out about that kind of stuff like I do. Um, before we dive in to our blessing and benediction, we have a shout out. Do you want to? Do you want to do our shout out? This was really fun. <clears throat> so, I, I, for some reason, I'm getting notified by this chart thing that tracks your podcast. I, anyway, I'd never heard of it, but somehow they found out that as of October 9th, 2019, we were notified that we were actually the number three podcast in religion and spirituality in the country Estonia in Northern Europe. So we just wanted to give a shout out to Estonia. Thank you for listening to us. We didn't even know that we were being heard in Estonia. So yeah, that was pretty cool. So if you're one of our Estonia listeners, here is a special welcome and thanks for helping us get to the top of those charts. That was pretty cool. That was exciting. Yep. I'm, I'm thinking now like everything in terms of our tendency. So I'm like, as an aunt, I'm like, yay, we're at the top of the charts. And as a puppy, you're probably like, oh, we're meeting people in Estonia. <laughs> we're connecting to their yeah. hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if you've been blessed by our podcast and would love to see us reach more women, we would love it if you would share the show with a friend. That would be amazing. And leave a review that also helps with the visibility and that, um, is a big blessing to us. So let's close today with our blessing and benediction. May God lead you today in a spirit of prayer. May he make his presence known to you throughout each moment. May he still and quiet your heart before him. May worldly distractions fail to pull you away from him. May your heart delight today in the Lord and in the joy of his glorious presence. In quietness and rest, may your spirit rejoice in your Savior who is with you now as well as always. And our benediction is from Revelation 22 verses 20 and 21. He who testifies to these things says, surely I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen.